Would you like to learn about enterprise architecture frameworks more specifically, the Zachman framework and the Togaf framework? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs and I'm the CEO of GoCloud Careers and I've spent about 25 years as an architect, as a network architect, a business architect and an enterprise architect. And today we're going to discuss two common enterprise architecture frameworks, the Toga framework and the Zachman framework. And we will compare them and we will contrast them and talk about various use cases for the two. As a review, we will briefly discuss what is an enterprise architecture framework. And an enterprise architecture framework is really a structured approach that can help you design your architecture and designing an architecture to help align the organization's people, processes, and technologies so they can get to their business goals. An enterprise architecture framework can really help organizations understand, plan, and uh, change their systems in a systematic and controlled manner, ensuring that all aspects of the enterprise are considered in the architectures of these businesses. So we'll briefly talk about TOGAF. And TOGAF is a very common enterprise architecture framework. I actually teach this framework to all of our students, whether they be cloud architects, enterprise architects, AI architects, any kind of architect, we teach this. And TOGAF was developed by the Open Group. And the purpose of the TOGAF framework is to provide a very comprehensive approach to designing, planning, implementing, and even governing an organization's information systems. It's a very structured approach. There's a detailed methodology called the architecture development method, which literally outlines a step-by-step -step approach for developing the architecture. It's some key components of the TOGAF framework are the architectural development method, and that's really the cycle that includes all phases of the architecture, such as the architecture vision, the business architecture, the information systems architecture, the technology architecture, the governance, change control, all of that. And it is a content framework as well. It provides a structured and overarching approach to the uh, architectural documents or artifacts that are gonna be created. And it's gonna cover the entire enterprise continuum and it will offer a way to categorize and even store all the key elemental and architectural documents. Now, TOGAF is very process oriented. It is a structured process, and that's great for developing an enterprise architecture when we need a lot of structure. It is very comprehensive because it looks at the business architecture, the architectural vision of the business goals. It looks at how the organization manages data, their applications and all their technology. And it's relatively flexible in that you can tailor the architecture to meet the needs of your organization or your client's organization. So let's talk about some strengths of TOGA. It is very detailed. It is a very step-by-step -step process for developing an architecture that, draw, that drives transformation. There's lots of resources on it. It's incredibly well-known. There's templates, there's guidelines, there's tools. And it's a very common and well-known framework. It's really useful for organizations that are huge, that are looking for detailed and process-driven approaches to architecture, and specifically enterprise architecture, but all architecture in general. And organizations and enterprises that really need that structure and comprehensive approach, TOGAF is absolutely great. Now let's talk about the Zachman framework. It was developed by John Zachman, and John Zachman was a real pioneer at IBM, and he's widely known as an expert with regards to business system planning, which is enterprise architecture. Now, he created his framework to provide a detailed method for organizing and understanding the enterprise. The Zachman framework is very easy to understand. It's really a matrix that uh, gets together two different things. The Zachman framework really describes, describes the what, the how, the who, the where, the when, of the architecture, and it really provide, goes into very detailed uh, different perspectives. It looks at the perspective of the planner, the owner, the system designer, the engineer, the implementation, and the people, and even the users. So you may hear different terms for this, but that's really what it's going through. It's looking at all components and building you a matrix to help you understand the enterprise. So I'll give you a little bit of information about the planner's view. 
And that's going to be where the business plan or strategy is going to be identified, focusing on issues or concerns that, and inside that matrix that you'll look at. So it'll be an owner's view. And this is going to identify the business needs and resources that are going to be necessary to execute the business plan, for example. So understanding the fundamental business concepts and every component that drives operations. There's going to be the designer's view as well. And this is how the plan will meet the business's needs. It will correspond to the work done by the systems analyst, detailing data, process flows and functions inside of the business. You have the engineer's perspective as well. And this is gonna be implement information about implementing the strategy, detailing the tools, the technology and the materials that the engineers will use, and even the constraints inside of that team. You will typically get a technician's perspective as well. And this is for the real deep requirements uh, on, you know, how it's going to be built, you know, into a product, service, or hardware, focusing on more of the assembly of the systems, if you will. And then, of course, there's going to be the user view. And that's going to be, you know, from the perspective of the functioning system, detailing how the system operates and how it's used inside of the business environment. So let's talk about the what. The what could be, say, for example, about the data. So the what is about the necessary business data, the information, and the requirements for the architectural project. It will discuss the how or the function. This how or function is going to identify how the processes operate and how these processes will impact the business. There's really the where, and that kind of refers to all networks, not necessarily just a data network, but it's going to talk about all the system networks and all relevant locations where business and operations occur. It will define the who or the people involved. It helps you identify key stakeholders and relevant personnel for the project. It helps you identify the when. This column was, was gonna specify, you know, what times uh, the business processes are performed inside of the company and even the why. What is the motivation behind the chosen solution? What's it trying to achieve for the organization? So the Zachman framework is more of a classification scheme. It focuses on descriptions and it emphasizes the importance of descriptive models. And it's again, it's a universal framework that can be applied to a wide variety of industries. Some real strengths of the Zachman framework is it's simple to understand. It's a matrix. It's pretty easy to, to develop. It's very versatile. You can use it for various business purposes long beyond outside of just IT, business process modeling, etc. And it's a great tool for helping an organization, you know, organize their complex architecture artifacts or different parts of their business. So, you know, where would you think about using the Zachman framework? Any organization that wants a straightforward descriptive framework for categorizing their information and, and art, art, artifacts, which are basically your architecture documents. I mean, this is a great framework or enterprises that really need something flexible and versatile, you know, really great here. So let's kind of summarize the difference between the two. Tolgaf was developed by the Open Group. Zachman was developed by Zan, John Zachman, you know, someone from IBM, well known at system planning. The purpose of Tolgaf is to be really comprehensive. The real main purpose of Zachman framework is to provide a taxonomy and really identify the key stakeholders, the key players. Togaf uses this architectural development method. It's very structured. Zachman is more of a communication questions and perspectives of who the user in certain places and the, the people that use the system. You know, the approach, uh, Togaf is very process oriented. Zachman is more classification oriented. You know, the strengths of TOGAF, it is very detailed and very process oriented. And the strengths of the Zachman framework is it's very simple. It's very flexible. So, you know, both of these frameworks are quite good. And you can use either one of these. The question is, which is going to better meet your needs now that you know about the TOGAF framework and the Zachman framework? Both good opportunities. If you'd like to learn how to become an enterprise architect or a cloud architect or an AI architect or a security architect, join us for one of our free webinars. There are many free resources as well as these free webinars in the description of this video. So go check them out and, down, and click one and download some. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to help you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video. Take care.